Psalms 103 verses 1 through 5 tells us, Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me, my mind, body, soul, and spirit, right? Forget not the benefits of the gospel, who not only forgives, but what does he heal? What does he do, saints? He heals. He heals. Put heals, healing in the chat. Put healing in the chat. That is the second benefit of the gospel. It is healing that God is able to provide for you and for me. And that is one of the benefits of accepting the gospel in our lives. Matthew 14, verse 14. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude and he was moved with what? He was moved with compassion for them and he healed their sick. So, so understand that the, 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 the majority of the ministry of Jesus while he was here on earth wasn't merely to preach because we see that he got a lot more teaching and healing than he did preaching. Come on, somebody, right? And, and I see so many ministries focusing so much on, on presenting the latest gossip rather than going out to the multitude and finding and having compassion towards them and healing their wounds, right? So, so we see that the example of Jesus, that when he healed the sick, he healed them because he had compassion towards them. And the reason why he had compassion, we see in Isaiah 53, verse 5, uh, 50, uh, uh, Isaiah 53, verse, uh, Isaiah 53, and verse 5, we see the promise of his healing that he was able to give. So I'm going to give you some promises that you and I can claim if we are dealing with physical ailments, right? If we need spiritual healing, God says there's a list of promises that you and I can claim and receive the benefits of the gospel. Notice what Isaiah 53 verse 5 tells us. But he was wounded for our transgression. Come on now. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. We are healed from our wounds. We are healed from our bruises because he has suffered that transgression and paid the penalty already. Because of his stripes, saints, you and I can receive the healing that you and I desire to receive. Jesus says in Mark chapter 9, verse 23, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Do you believe that you can be made well? Do you believe that God has the power to relieve you from your ailment, from your broken heart, or from your so or, or, or from your physical ailment, right? Notice one of the promises found in uh, uh, Exodus chapter 15 and verse 26, where the Bible tells us, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord, your God, and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all of his statues. Now, now I don't want you to stress because you're not, you and I are not able to keep the statues and, or his commandments. And we're going to talk about that here in a second. But he says, I will put none of these diseases on you, which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who does what, saints? Who heals you. So this is a promise that God gave the people of Israel as he was getting them out of Egypt and into the promised land. He says, the, the, the diseases that I gave the Egyptians will not fall on you as long as you heed to my commands and heed my statutes. Now, we see all throughout the Old Testament, the people of Israel making a promise and then breaking that promise. So it got to a point where in Ezekiel, God was like, you know what? I'm going to do the work that you cannot do for yourself. I'm going to give you a new heart. I'm going to put my commands, uh, my law into your, in, into your mind. And I will empower you to do what you are incapable of doing. And he says, as long as you allow me to do, right, what I uh, set out to do, that I am the Lord who will heal you. So even if you receive a disease, right, God says, I will heal you. So, beloved, 3 John chapter 1, verse 2, beloved, I pray that you may prosper. Woo, woo. I, I know some of y'all don't, don't believe in the prosperity gospel, but God says he wants your health and your soul to prosper. <laughs> Now, 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 I want you to understand that he want, that, that the Bible promises that I, I wish that you will prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. And Hebrews saints, 13 verse 8 tells us that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So the same God who promised the people of Israel that he will heal them if they ever receive diseases is the same God today who promises you that you will be able to receive any relief from the ailment that you're experiencing. The question is, do you believe? Do you believe that he wants you to prosper? Do you believe that he wants all good things for you? Not only mentally, not only spiritually, but financially as well. Yeah, some of y'all don't believe that your finances impact your mental. <laughs> and when you're constantly stressed, guess what that impacts? Your physical. But many of us want to focus on the physical 
right? Some of us uh, 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 want to focus on the mental, but then we don't ever look to see the other areas of our lives that God wants to restore and allow us to prosper so we can be complete in him. He says, beloved, I have prayed that you may prosper in all things, in every area in your life. God wants you to prosper. Whether it be in school, he wants you to prosper. When it comes to relationship, he wants you to prosper. When it comes to your investments, he wants you to prosper. When it comes to your health, he wants you to prosper. When it comes to your uh, mental health and your spiritual life, he wants you to prosper. Just don't lose your soul in the process. Come on now. Like, don't lose your soul in the process. God wants our soul to prosper. And as our soul prospers, everything aligns behind that prosperity. Come on now. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. James chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. If anyone amongst you sick, let them call the elders of the church. Let them pray over him. Anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And he has committed sins. He will be forgiven. This is the benefit. Not only forgiveness, but healing sins. We see that Jesus heals the suffering. We just heard the testimonies earlier today of how God listens to the prayers of his people and he delivers. And at times God is going to allow that burden. Sometimes God permits that burden to take upon you to see if you truly trust him with all of your heart, mind, body, and soul. You got diagnosed with cancer. Do you believe that God will uh, uh, take away that, that, uh, that, that, that cancer from your life? When you're dealing with depression and anxiety, and heartbreak, do you believe that God will heal? And even if not, do you believe that God is still good throughout that process? Will, will your love for him increase in those moments where it seems to be difficult? He truly heals the suffering. We see not only the physical suffering that God wanted to alleviate us from, not only the oppression that we experience, we see that example in the book of Job, but the depression that we experience, right? Those moments where we're ready to give up, Jesus inspires us new faith. And I can't tell you from the time, from, from 2020 to now, those moments where I felt like giving up, God says, don't worry about tomorrow. Just worry about the next 10 minutes. Can, can, you, can, can you at least have faith in me that I can get you to the next 10 minutes, the next day, the next week, the next month, right? And as God was healing me, saints, right, through my depression, in those moments where I felt like giving up, he was inspiring new faith that now everything that I prayed for or I envisioned in, in, that, in that dream that God placed in my heart for me to fulfill, I'm currently living in it. <laughs> I'll share that more about later. But, but even those who are suffering from demonic possession, right? God is able, able to alleviate those demons from your life. But notice the mental suffering that we sometimes experience, right? With this, uh, with elections coming up, we, we see the, the, the state of, economic affairs in the stock market, the housing markets, right? There's a lot of worry, right? It is, is the, the investment that I'm putting into these properties is going to pay out for me or am I going to lose my life savings? Philippians 4 verse 7 tells us that the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Don't worry. God says, I'll give you peace. Are, are you having discouragement? Matthew 14 verse 27 tells us to be of good cheer. Why? Because he already overcame the world. So why would I need to be discouraged about the losses when the losses are simply lessons for me and for my, for my faith to increase in him? He says, be a good cheer. Ben, I'm going to be a good cheer. Even in those moments where you didn't get that job that you thought you wanted. Even though the person you thought you were going to spend the rest of your life with didn't work out the way that you anticipated. The, the scholarship that you thought you was going to get. The, the school of your dreams that you didn't get accepted to, right? Those disappointments, Second Chronicles 12 verse 9 tells us that my grace is sufficient. It is enough for you. I may have, uh, uh, the, 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 your desire may not come into full fruition, but just know I got something in the background. There's a million ways that I'm going to make you uh, uh, prosper and happy that you don't know nothing of. But do you trust me in that process? 